In this video, I'm going to cover how to make a seamlessly repeating pattern inside Adobe Illustrator. And this method is fairly easy to use. So if you're a beginner at creating seamless patterns, this is a really good way to go about it. And I have my logo dragged onto this artboard right here just so you can see what I'm going to repeat. But you can feel free to use whatever it is you want to use. It could be type, it could be objects or illustrations. Pretty much anything should work. Just make sure you have enough room on your artboard to go ahead and repeat it. And the method I'm going to be using to repeat this, at least at the very base level, is the move command. So you're going to need to know the exact size of your artboard. So my artboard is 1000 by 1000 pixels, but you should definitely keep note of what your artboard size is as it will save you a bit of trouble in the future. And also if you don't know what it is and you want to check very quickly, you can just go to file and then document setup. And from the document setup window right here, just hit edit artboards and that'll show you the width and the height of your artboard. It's right here on my screen. So it shows a width of 1000 pixels and a height of 1000 pixels. So just write down what your exact dimensions are if you think you'll forget it and you'll be able to use those in just a second here. So I'm going to hit escape to back out of here. And one other thing, you might want to turn on your smart guides. And if I, for example, zoom in on my logo right here and hover over the top here so it says path, that is a smart guide that's letting me know that that's there. So to turn on smart guides, hit control U on a PC or command U on a Mac. So I hit control U again and it turned off my smart guide. So when I highlight over the edges here, it doesn't tell me. But if I hit control U on a PC or command U on a Mac once again, and I highlight over these edges, it lets me know that I'm on the edge. And it will also tell you when you're on the center of things or a lot of stuff like that that's just really useful for a lot of design things in general. But this is what I'm going to be repeating. So I'm just going to quickly drag it down here into the bottom left corner. And the basic principle of a seamless repeat in Illustrator here is that anything in the middle right here will obviously repeat very nicely, depending on if you position it somewhat well. But at least nothing will ever get cut off and look all clipped, which is a huge problem with seamless repeats. But anything you drag over one of the edges, like this one right here, has to be in the exact same spot on the other edge. So wherever it cuts off, in this case, in the exact middle of this logo, it has to cut off in the exact middle of the logo on the other side. And this is one benefit to using smart guides. If I zoom in really close right here, and then I just start dragging this over, when I get to the exact middle intersection point, you can tell that it's gonna draw a line vertically. It's a green color on my screen. It might be a little bit hard to see, but smart guides will let you know when you have an object over the direct center of that object on the artboard's line. So that's one very quick way to do this. So if I wanted to, I could just delete this one on the other side. And then I'm gonna click on this logo right here, and I'm gonna hold on Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, start dragging it to the right, and then hold Shift, which just makes it stay in this perfect horizontal plane right here. And once I get to the exact center of this line right here, the artboard line, you can tell it draws another intersect line. So this right here would seamlessly repeat perfectly, but I'm gonna show you a little bit different way of doing this too, if you wanna make things move around a bit less symmetrically. And also if you wanted to, you could just highlight over both of these and then move them. And no matter where you place them on this line, it'll always cut off on the exact same point as these are already aligned perfectly. So they're just gonna to happen to look good. The same principle applies on the top and the bottom as well. So just keep that in mind. But I'm just gonna delete this and then I'm gonna to go to the bottom corner right here so I can repeat it off this bottom corner, which is a little bit more tricky. So that's why I'm showing this one. I'm just gonna bring my logo right here onto the center of both the intersects. So you can tell it's drawn a line, the green line vertically and horizontally on my screen, but you don't have to make it be just like this if you don't want to. This is just one way of going ahead and doing it. So if you want to do this using the move command as opposed to smart guides, just highlight over your object using the selection tool, which is the black arrow, and then hit control C on a computer or command C on a Mac, and then control F on a PC or command F on a Mac to duplicate it in place. And then I'm going to right click on this object and I'm going to go to transform. And then I want to select move near the top. I'm just going to hit this preview button so I can see where this thing's actually moving. I don't want any vertical movement because I'm just going to repeat it across the horizontal line here. So I'm going to enter zero for my vertical. And then under horizontal, I want to move it exactly 1000 pixels, which matches the width of the artboard that I've created. So that's why I said to write it down earlier because it's just an easy way to go ahead and create an exact positional repeat. So I'm just gonna move this to 1000, click off of it so it does that move. This looks good and I'm gonna hit okay. So now both of these will be on the same point, both vertically right here, as well as horizontally on the bottom. And now I'm just gonna need to do the exact same right here across the top. So I'm gonna highlight over both of these, hit Control C on a PC or Command C on a Mac, then Control F on a PC or Command F on a Mac. I'm gonna right click this once again, go to transform and then move. And this time we don't want any horizontal and I wanna move it vertically 1000 pixels. And moving things up vertically on Illustrator requires a negative value, not a positive value. So I'm gonna do negative 1000 pixels right there. And I'm gonna click off of that just so we can see that move happened and I'm gonna hit okay. So right here we have the baseline for our repeat. Everything should repeat perfectly. If I were to duplicate all these, right in each one of these four different corners would be a repeated logo. But if you wanna repeat these in between these as well and have the spacing be absolutely perfect, here's a quick way of going ahead and doing that. Just highlight over 
over the top two or the side two, whatever the case may be, and then go to Object, and then we want to go to Blend, and then we want to go to Blend Options, and this is where we can set how to actually blend these around. So I'm going to select Spacing, Specified Steps. You can also use Specified Distance if you want to make this an exact value. I tend to find steps a bit more useful because I can just kind of count out how many of these I want to be in between the two. So if you want three in the middle right here, you just enter Specified Steps of three, but change that number to be whatever it is you want to be. If you want an exact value of distance between them, use Specified Distance instead. But I'm going to hit OK. And the weird thing about Illustrator is when you do that, nothing happens, as you can see right here, which is kind of frustrating. Like, I don't know why you can't just apply it from this menu, but you have to go back to Object, and then Blend, and then Make, and that goes ahead and repeats these very nicely and also very easily right there. So I'm just going to hide over the bottom two right now, and this time we can just go to Object, Blend, and then Make because it remembers the settings up above here, so it goes ahead and does a nice job of that. And now to get these to repeat vertically nicely on this line right here, just like we did across the horizontal line right here, I just have to select each one of these and then go to Object and then Expand, and then I'm gonna hit Object and Fill and just hit OK, and that'll expand these so it's no longer a blend. And I'm also gonna do that on the bottom one right here, so select that, and then Object, Expand, have Fill and Stroke, and just hit OK. And now I'm gonna highlight over all of these, and I'm gonna blend these this time. So I'm gonna go to Object, Blend, and then Make. And as you can see, it does this perfectly across the vertical this time instead of the horizontal. And if you wanna change the number of these as well, if you don't like the way your blend looks and you wanna change it a little bit, you can just highlight over this once again, go to Object, then Blend, and then Blend Options, and I can change this to be like four and it will automatically go ahead and put four in there. So don't expand these on the top or bottom or wherever you're doing it, the sides, whatever the case may be, until you think it looks good. But once you do think it looks good, you can go ahead and do that and you should be good to go from there. So this is actually a perfect repeat. So it's pretty darn easy to go in there and make these using the few methods that I showed. And if you wanna make sure that these are clipped perfectly right here, you're just gonna to wanna to draw a box around this using the rectangle tool, which is right here on the toolbar. It's M as a keyboard shortcut by default. And you just want to make sure this box is the exact same size as your artboard. So I'm just going to click it really quick and set it to 1000 by 1000 pixels and hit OK. So now this box is the exact same dimension as my artboard. And I'm just going to align it to be right on the edges of the side right here as well as the edges on the vertical right here. So now it perfectly matches my artboard. And then when you're done with that, you can just highlight over everything using the selection tool, which is the black arrow or V on your keyboard as a shortcut. Once you do that, just right click and then you can go ahead and hit make clipping mask and this goes ahead and clips it to the size of the artboard so this right here is now our seamless repeat so i'm going to zoom out just a little bit right here and i'm going to hold alt while clicking and dragging to duplicate this and i'm going to select the edge of this new object we just made right here and i'm going to hold on alt and start dragging it to the side and then also hold shift so it's on a perfect horizontal plane and i'm going to make sure it lines up right here it tells me it's intersecting and it shows this green line meaning this is all matched up so I did that right there, and as you can tell, this is a nice seamless repeat to the side. And if I do this, once again, select it all, hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, start dragging this up while holding Shift so it's on the perfect vertical line, and then align it right here until it says Intersect and let go. You can see it goes ahead and makes this a nice seamless repeat that's very easy to use. So this is a pretty cool and easy way to go ahead and do this. And if you wanna make a background color on this as well, you can just go back to the rectangle tool which is right here on the toolbar, or hit M on your keyboard to go ahead and select it. And then you just have to draw a rectangle over your artboard. So right here it's gonna tell me where my anchors are because I have smart guides open. So I'm gonna to go to the top left right here and drag down to the bottom right until it says anchor again. So this is the perfect size of my artboard. And I can verify that up here at the top too where it says 1000 by 1000 pixels. Or you can just select the rectangle tool, click off, make sure these settings match the settings of your artboard, hit okay, and then drag it in place. And once you select the fill color of whatever it is you want your background to be, I'll just make this a pretty bright color so I can actually see what's going on here. You just click onto it, right click it, go to arrange, and then you want to send it back. So now we have our repeat over the top here and then the color behind it for the background. And then if you want to make sure these always stay together, you can just highlight over everything and then hit control G on a PC or command G on a Mac to group it up. And then you should be good to go with a perfectly repeating seamless pattern, just like what you see right here. So that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Seamlessly repeating patterns are super useful to use in a lot of designs, particularly on stuff like apparel or web design where you want stuff to repeat, but you don't want a really huge file to cover a large window size. This stuff really shines in applications like that. So if you did find this video helpful, please like and favorite. And if you want to see stuff like this every week, please subscribe. I do my best to keep creating content just like this for illustrators and designers. Thanks so much for watching.